Hello, welcome to Quack Talk. I'm Crystal here. And today we have a very important topic where I think the key word is broken. And what does that mean to be broken? You know, when a system doesn't work, when things uh, you think you've, you've made that effort to um, work your way towards something as a measure of success, and then, huh, maybe it doesn't work. I'm talking about college higher education, and the way things are playing out today all over the world, uh, the unemployment rates, the uh, lack of uh, opportunities out there, and, you know, also the lack of positivity around college students in, like, what's this all about and whether it's worth it. So I have with me an amazing uh, college counselor based in Hong Kong, uh, Jen Lee. Jen Lee is the deputy director of the University uh, sorry, of Counseling of CIS, which is the Chinese International School. And just to give you a little uh, background, when I lived in Hong Kong, my kids went to that school. It's an international school. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. But so Jen brings over 21 years of related professional experience, having worked in Hong Kong, Shanghai, Korea, and the U.S. in both university admissions and college counseling. And she brings to CIS a wealth of knowledge garnered from her previous role as Director of College Counseling at the Buckley School in Los Angeles, Head of Counseling at the Shanghai American School, the Pushti Campus, and who worked as an admission officer at Scripps College and an outside admissions reader for UCLA. She was also the inaugural recipient of the International Association for College Admissions Counseling Rising Star Award. And Jen received her bachelor's at Wellesley, and earned her master's in education from Harvard. So on that huge, amazing note, welcome, Jen, to our show. Thank you so much, Crystal. What a warm welcome. Really appreciate it and happy no. to be here today. The honor is mine because, you know, we had casually talked about this over kind of under social um, uh, backgrounds to just joke about the problems with higher education today, but now we have to really kind of let's crack that nut because a lot of people who are going through it now, and even maybe you can back up and tell us like how much things have changed so that we're here today talking about the problems with the process to get into higher education and also the, the complexities of how we measure success around this idea of higher education. Right. Um, goodness, it's such a hot topic. I don't even know where to begin, but I think I think we have to begin with um, this notion of, you know, achievement culture, especially mm -hmm. um, in those schools that I've worked at in some of the premier international schools here in Asia. And then um, I've also worked in Los Angeles private schools. So, you know, there is a lot of affluence, but um, I think all around, we know that with higher ed and getting into some of these highly selective universities, it's become quite challenging and challenging because um, the volume has increased, right? So students are applying globally all over, from all over the world and the number of applications have risen. It's not necessarily that the number of applicants have risen per se, but um, it's this anxiety, fear induced culture. Is my son or daughter going to be able to guarantee, um, be guaranteed admissions in one of the, the top highly selective institutions? And what do I need to do to prepare them? And then this whole um, cottage industry of outside consultants and SAT prep and, you know, it runs the gamut. And then if you're an athlete hiring athletic coaches to build their athletic portfolio, um, so it goes on and on. Um, yeah, it's, but it's I'm, crazy. If you like, sorry, um, but when my kids were back in school before they did this process, I feel like it was the same thing. But somehow something is different now in a way that it doesn't guarantee. Like, would you say that maybe 10 years ago, there was a measure of success in channeling yourself into these higher education spaces, these privileged kind of elite schools, whereas now there's no guarantee of anything going into them and spending the, the millions of dollars that you do, as you had mentioned. <laughs> yeah, I think the system, um, I'd like to say, quite frankly, inherently was broken. I mean, we saw um, the whole scandal with, um, you know, 
that that consultant, admissions consultant, right. and how parents were willing to dole out, you know, X number of millions of dollars to fabricate even the profile of their children. So it's kind of gone really far. And um, I think COVID definitely mm -hmm. exacerbated what was already a system that was kind of on, um, you know, it's not broken in the sense that, yes, it's still it's still running. Students are still getting in. But I would say the the striving, the competition, the um, outrageous padding of the profiles and what are we really going after? And and then the rise in issues of students feeling so despondent and depressed and anxious. And we have to touch upon the mental health issues as a right. result of all this. Um, so and it's, it's kind of being kind of uh, blanketed. I, I you know that mental health is kind of like a buzzword, but I still feel like there's a long way we need to go to really digging into the core of how these things develop, right? It's not something that happens overnight. There are a multitude of um, of conditions that lead one to have mentally um, health issues. Absolutely. And um, I've been reading a lot of different books, but one of the books, um, Never Enough, okay? Yeah. I don't know this author. She is um, Jennifer Wallace, and I know she is a former journalist, or maybe she is still a journalist, but it's a New York Times bestseller, and basically it's talking about um, achievement culture, when achievement mm -hmm. culture becomes toxic, and what we can do about it. And I feel that this is a book that every parent should read. It touches upon everything, you know, um, college admissions, parenting, um, mental health, achievement culture, affluent communities, all of it. Um, and what inherently as parents are parents doing to to push their kids to the point of kids kind of breaking and then continuing on to college where they don't maybe have the resilience or the support system and and then they turn, you know, I'm talking about extreme cases, but this this is a situation where um it's unhealthy. It's unhealthy for our adolescents. Um I know last year when I was working in Los Angeles private schools, um, one of one of the schools in the area, there were a number of death by suicides of our teenagers, and that should not be the case. Exactly. So um, what are we teaching our students? What are we teaching yeah. our adolescents? And but in Asia, much, right? <laughs> yeah, in Asia, as you know, it's all about education. And, you know, it's all about name brand recognition. So when they talk about um, you have to get into a good school, you know, what what is the definition of a good school? You and I both know in the grand scheme of life, college is important. Yes. However, there are many different roads to success. Exactly. And, and everybody um, learns differently. So you can't apply the same rules to every individual. Right. Right. And so it's all of it. Um, it's it's a topic that, you know, I I didn't think in college when I was going to attending Wellesley that I would one day become an admission officer mm -hmm. and then a college counselor. It wasn't it wasn't in my it line of like trajectory. Job. <laughs> <laughs> I actually wanted to be the next Connie Chung because growing wow. up in um in New York, in Long yeah. Island, I didn't see many Asian yeah. American faces exactly. on TV. But now, now as you know, like, um, yeah, there are many. But, but so going yes. back to the um, popularity, uh, I mean the the competition, the fierce competition within uh, Asian communities. Because first of all, you have, like you say, it's that support system and the pressures that a lot of Asian parents put on their kids from day one. Right? I mean, like at right. CIS, you know these these parents are from kindergarten, they are putting them in all these special support systems to already kind of check those boxes to build them up to um, wherever they are to, to have this so-called ideal uh, resume, which doesn't guarantee anything anyway, because everybody on paper has the perfect marks. And so when you do that, you start canceling each other out. Colleges are starting to kind of um, pick up on these perfect papers and, they, and they're looking for alternatives. But then are the Asian parents that you see, are they picking up on the fact that they are looking for other things and encouraging them to do some more creative endeavors? Or do you think that they're still cycling and recycling this old idea of uh, measures of success? 
I think um, I think it's all of it, right? I think um, no matter how much you may counsel, advise um, parents, and we do in our in our university counseling office, we are very um, intentional, and now we incorporate kind of the social emotional wellness factors into our counseling to make it a lot more holistic. But um, you know, I think that that's always going to be there. And what I found, whether I'm in Asia or an affluent suburb somewhere in the U.S. Um, or uh, New York City, Los Angeles, wherever, it's it's this notion of achievement culture. Because right now, as you know, the world is the world is on fire. It's uncertain, and I think lots of parents they they want, of course, which what parent wouldn't want the best for their child. And education is, you know, definitely a value that everyone holds dear, not everyone, but many people. So um, so-and-so is going this route, you know, right. but really, um, I, I really emphasize to my students to take the time to have some introspection in this. And, you know, a lot of this process, it's a self-actualizing process, right? For adolescents who are just thinking about their future, their uh, identity is still being developed sure. um, and to really ask the hard questions. The problem is our culture doesn't always encourage it, right? Yeah, I was going to say, you can have great core values yourself and have a dream to do something to change the world, but the world doesn't necessarily see your talents in that way. So you kind of still have to play a game in the way that the system works. Or do you? Yeah, have- I think, yeah, I mean, listen, we... There is always a system, right? There is always a system. But with that said, I also have um, kind of a different way of thinking about things. And maybe this is this is just the way I grew up and, and my liberal arts background and also just the strong will in terms of um, I believe in possibilities and intention and growth mindset. So if I were to fail, I I have the wherewithal, right? The resilience to pick myself up and get back again, get back up again and try. And and these are the deposits, I think, you know, when it comes to parenting, um, I think these are the things that the parents need to really deposit and encourage and parent well with yeah. their children, especially in this generation. This generation, right? How many wars, how many wars are going on? Um, it's, yeah. It's a negative, it can be a negative, gloomy outlook. Yeah. But with that said, I think when I when I talk about core <laughs> values, it's what what does your family esteem? Um, I think this notion of students who um are what what the what they're called healthy strivers, right? There's this term, right? And even in that book, never enough, healthy strivers. They knew that they mattered, okay? They know their worth. They know that despite setbacks, failures, or challenges, that it's not it's not an indictment on who they are. If they fail, they still know they mattered and they have the resilience and the wherewithal to bounce back and try again, right? So it's this notion of kids having, adolescents having a healthy sense of self, a healthy sense of self-esteem, that they matter to their um, family, that they matter to their community. And this this notion of worth and mattering, I think, is is really going to be crucial, um, and that involves parents and family and Absolutely. all of that. And I feel Particular- like traditional Chinese are still not getting it. They're still putting that same pressure. You know, having been in Hong Kong for again, I, I hear people always. You know, even growing up, parents are always comparing with other kids, like, oh, how come so-and-so is doing this, you know, well, and, and that's really brutal for, you know, the self-esteem of, of a kid who's striving to do their best, and they might not be the best at a certain thing, or, you know, it, it doesn't work that way for everyone. Right, I mean, we live in social media culture, right, yeah. where it's comparison culture, and, um, you know, there's research on this, how harmful and detrimental detrimental social media is to adolescents, especially adolescent girls, um, yeah. and phones and all of that. So yeah. I just, I think, I think this notion of self-worth mattering, knowing themselves, I think this is really crucial in terms of parents really cultivating that in their child, because, you know, I'm not trying to, 
you know, I'm not trying to give parenting advice here, but what I've seen in my time of, of students and counseling students is that um, the students who have the strong sense of self, the strong sense of community, a strong sense of family, all of these things, they know that at the end of the day, despite their outcome, right, wherever they get okay. in, they will be yeah. happy yes. and, um, and be successful according to their right. measure of success. Well, that's the ideal, you know, situation. But then again, there's a lot of students who slip through the cracks where they have the pressure of maybe other siblings who have been successful and they've got, already gotten into these top schools. And then they're like, oh, gosh, all eyes on me to perform the yes. same way. Or uh, my daughter was just telling me that she has a, an old high school friend who got into a top school because her friend had actually helped her throughout the whole application process. So it was like, wow, so you can get through the system. But then what happens to you as a person when you slide through in, in, in different supportive ways and you didn't make the effort yourself? So how do you right. feel about those types of situations? Yeah, I mean, we had it. Like, I remember even back in the day um, when I was at Wellesley and, like, I heard about these international students at Boston University. You know, they, they have a very strong international community, even, um, many, many, you know, for long history of that. Yeah. And I hear about students being on academic probation or they can't hack it, you know, so it, even if they get admitted, when they get to university, they're going to have to be able to balance all of it. Right. And, you know, American higher education, it's not just about academics. You know, there's there's the social life. Right. There's a the social okay. aspect. And well, that's a problem. Um, that film, that documentary, Ivory Towers, which is quite old now, but I remember it showing the kind of the eliteness of these college students who are just partying and 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 just filling their parents' hard-earned money on just this frivolous four years of nothingness, and 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 then again questioning what the purpose of education is when you you work your way, you think you worked hard in there to assume the successful path beyond, and yet. You're just pouring it away because you never really appreciated that process yourself. So does it come down to the person, the type of person who's going into that school, no matter what kind of support system you have, or, you know, what is it you think that actually takes the proper kind of qualities? I think, to in yeah, life? I think it's, it's, it's what, you know, it's what you said. It, it depends on the student, but it really depends. Again, I'm going to go back to their values. Um, their intentions, their goals, um, what their interests are and in knowing themselves and then how much of a drive they have, how much are they motivated to kind of see that through and how important is it, right? Yeah. If, they're, if their intention is, you know, to become a doctor or, or to become a dancer, it everyone's goals are different, the right? Effort, but I, it's the effort, right? The integrity with whatever the your, your own, effort, whatever it feels. I want to say, I know we only have a couple of minutes left, but um, based in my experience teaching at, at Hong Kong U and a lot of the grad students are from mainland China. And I am so blown away by how hard they work. Of course, people say, oh, it's the Chinese work ethics. But it's not just that, you know, and there's, there's a competition to be able to, you know, there's a huge competition within that culture and country with the numbers, the vast numbers. But yet you still have to just admire their sense of integrity that I don't see happening in a lot of U.S. systems. Yeah, I think I think. Um you know, different environments, different upbringings, different values, <laughs> different, different mindsets. Um, I think with China, the competition is so, so strict because um, of the Gao Cao. And, and, you know, that, that's a, it's a really challenging right. exam. Not yeah. everyone is able to um, be successful in that. So when you're growing up in that kind of context, um, it's a little different than growing up maybe in the suburbs of New York. And we don't see still the, human culture. Yeah. You talked about the cost, the consequences. You don't know what's really broken inside a person who's gone through this vigorous training where, you know, I don't know. I mean, where where is that the, the, the balance of happiness and pursuing your own passions and working hard to get where you want to in life? Um, in our short minute left, would you have, um, yeah, what would your suggestions be based on a college counselor to these kids who are just really struggling to to navigate their path and what it means to succeed in this world today? 
Yeah, I think um, know know that you matter. Okay, I think having a healthy sense of who you are, um, under start understanding who you are, your strengths. Um, it's important to have a big dream, right? I know this sounds kind of um, it might be a little bit more uh, just untraditional, right, of what I'm saying, but I think when you know yourself you're going to have more clarity in where you're going and the vision you have for your next educational career and the next chapter. Um, because otherwise you're going to get swept away by other people's expectations, your parents' expectations, um, the school's expectations. And so it's really important to get clear about your strengths, yeah. Um, your intentions, your goals, your dreams, and taking the time for that. Um, I can't emphasize that enough because it's the flip side of that is, you know, they always ask, oh, what do I need to do to get into this top school? I know. And, and they're going the wrong not, way. And the parents, the and right I hope the parents hear what you have to say. And you said that book, um, was it called Never Enough is something you recommended. Yes. And I just feel like there, you know, there's a push pull. There's a lot of support system going on. And I hope parents really kind of reassess how a kid's mental health and um, well-being. And you said, you know, how they kind of find themselves is so crucial. So thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm just hoping that the system doesn't get, they might get uglier before it gets fixed. But, you know, we're dealing with a time that's so uncertain and we're just all navigating it together. So appreciate your perspective as a counselor extraordinaire. This is Jen Lee. Thank you so much. Thank you, Crystal.